Yeah. Hey, everyone. Welcome. Yeah, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> I am not going to say it. Welcome, everyone. It is Tuesday. It is 2 o'clock on the East Coast. It's 11 o'clock on the West Coast. This is SVT time. My name is Dino Monoxilis. Dom Liberati, my ever faithful co-host and co-ampeg brother and bass brother is here joining us. Um, I, I got to tell you, uh, we're going to, so again, we're, we're covering venture again. We don't have a special guest today. Um, mainly again, because like I said before, a lot of people are out on the road touring and we kind of want to devote this time to, to answering people's questions about, um, you know, questions about venture and ampeg stuff in general. So a mm -hmm. um, couple of things I want to point out. Hey, by the way, Dom, how are you? <laughs> I'm like, Great, man. Good. I, I've only had about six cups of coffee between uh, <laughs> between breakfast and now. So you know, Sam, because um, he's got multiple camera setups. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm, I'm all amped up. My doctor says I need to lay off the Red Bull. But yes, I've got um, a special for this. Um, I, I, I set up a bunch of different cameras. So like, even though this is, we're, we're getting kind of fancy and I am my own cameraman. So this is one oh, angle. <laughs> this is the other angle. And then we've got the roaming iPhone. So if anybody wants like close-ups of my laundry room, of course, but, uh, <laughs> of, of venture, um, we've got all that going. Now, are we going to use it all? Probably not. But uh, well, it's here sure. just in case. Yeah. Um, before we get into this, just a couple of things, uh, a couple of house cleaning things that I want to bring up. Um, number one, SGTDIs are back in stock from what I saw in inventory. So we've got SGTDIs uh, for anybody out there that's been waiting on one. Um, contact your retailer and you should be, you know, if you, if you're online or if you're buying it in store, whatever, but, uh, and if you're, if your retailer does not have an SGTDI in store in stock for you to go purchase, we have them, they can order them. You can get them. It's mm -hmm. that easy. Uh, the other thing I wanted to bring up was um, some folks had expressed concerns about shipping charges for swag. Cause I know, you know, Dom and I are always wearing our swag and we've seen some guys like, man, it's, that has been resolved Dom, from what I'm, from what I understand. Um, oh, that's good. That yeah. Sure. Dave Murphy and, and his whole crew were able to, were able to figure it out and um, get those shipping charges. Now it's still, there are still shipping charges. I want to say like to ship a hoodie from California to New Hampshire is still going to be about close to 10 bucks, which mm -hmm. isn't a lot, but you know, it's uh it's, it's a lot better than, um, I think it was somebody, some guys were saying it was like almost 20 or $25. It was a glitch in our shipping system. Um, other than that, that's pretty much it. Those, those are my two comments. Um, I want to address, uh, Tino tone studios comment. I'll be right back and grab something. Yeah. 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 And I am going to say hello to everybody here. Paul, JC, Steve, Paul, again, Tino, Paul, again, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got uh, some questions about rack mounting. Now, yep. we aren't officially recommending rack mounting based on thermal. We know it does work, though. We have tested it, but uh, we legally, that's a thing. Uh, so if you really, really want to rack mount your heads, uh, you can get like a Gator uh, 2 or 3U. And uh, th just because it provides some nice uh, room around the amp. And you take off the feet screws and you basically just line them up with this and then screw them back in and voila rack mount. Yeah. And there's a few other solutions too outside of Gator, but we've tried, uh, we've tried those. They work pretty great. And uh, that's for all three heads, but the, obviously the seven and 12 people want to rack mount a little bit uh, yeah. more. So, yeah. It's, you know, it, it, I, I know we had talked about it too. It's, you know, why would you take an eight pound amp <laughs> and rack mount it? But, the obvious answer is, well, I've got my wireless, I've got my power condition, I've got a bunch mm -hmm. of rack mount stuff that, you know, I just want it all in one compact uh, yeah. thing. But yeah, just just keep that in mind, though, guys. You know, it's like, you know, you're taking literally your take the V12, I think, is eight and a half pounds. Yeah. You're taking an eight pound amplifier and and granted, it's a lot lighter than a 20 pound amplifier in a two space rack. But um, that's and, a great and and the reason why we are so adamant about like, you know, you're kind of racking the set at your own risk is because we don't know what else you're putting in there. And we don't know yep. the ambient temperature that you're 
the heat that you're building up with all of your other um all your other rack gear so we yeah. just don't know we don't want to tell you yeah it's totally safe and then you're throwing just a ton of tube amps in there and just keep yeah, right. on, you know it's just I, enclosed in there so just be I will cautious say, oh go ahead i'm sorry i didn't mean to cut you off there well yeah just just uh be sensible you know yeah that's all and just uh, uh what i was going to say is remember heat rises so you know, like with any amp, with the 4 Pro, 3 Pro, any of the Pro Series stuff, this stuff, if you're going to put it in a rack, put it at the bottom of the rack so that heat can rise yeah. up and dissipate out and leave space on the sides. And and don't necessarily, you know, if you've if you've got a four-space rack, doesn't mean you have to put four rack units in there. Like, leave a space above your amp in, in any situation. It doesn't matter if it's an Ampeg rig or whatever. In any amp that you're rack mounting. Always try and leave a space above your amp so he can dissipate up and out. And, and yeah. they sell these little rack fans now too that you can stick on the back of your rack and uh, kind of pull the air out. So um, yeah, so looking to hook one of these up with a four thousand three Rick and an Ampeg PF fifty T. I'm assuming uh, these talking venture cabs, which is cool. I would love to hear that. That'd be awesome. I, I'm, I, unless he's looking at. Um, with a Rick, maybe running. Paul, are you talking about running stereo out, like running one pickup to a to a venture rig and another pickup to a PF fifty T, or or like Dom was saying, using the PF fifty T head into a venture into a venture cabinet? Let us know. Um, so yeah, uh, Steve. Um, one thing that uh, we are working on that the merch page on the website. That is something that uh, that is being worked on. I know it's kind of been an ongoing thing for anybody that's trying to access the merch page outside of the U S they're getting in an error code. So um, I think part of the reason being is because a lot the merch that we're selling on our website is limited to, I think the U S I could be wrong on that, but um, anyways, I apologize for that. Uh, we also had a Jonathan Martinez. Can you uh, post these? Yeah. Actually, I can't. Uh, I'm not logged into StreamYard, so we're going to have to rely on on Haji. Uh, oh, there we go. Yeah, thoughts on a PF800 with an SCRDI. My personal opinion is that that probably is overkill because I think those two EQs from each respective product is like from the same era of Ampeg, yeah. so I think they're pretty much redundant EQs. Yeah. Yeah. Unless unless you are unless you're using the SCRDI sort of like a second channel sort mm, of thing, yeah. like a second EQ point. Um yeah. or you're green. using the SCRDI to go into the power amp in on the back of your PF eight hundred and you're strictly using the PF eight hundred as as a power section per se. Um but yeah, if you're if you know, you just got to be careful because you're stacking an EQ on top of an EQ, and those EQs are actually very similar. Yeah. So yeah, so might potentially get phasing. I would think with that, maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah, unless like typically, if I were to do that, I would run my PF800 completely flat. I'd run everything up. You know what I mean? And use the EQ on the SCRDI or vice versa. Just use the SCRDI sort of like a little boost mm -hmm. and, and run my EQ and everything off the uh off the PF eight hundred. So uh oh thanks, Paul. Yep, that that is correct. Cool. Let us man, we, we love uh we love sound samples. So yes. especially Rick's, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah. Do you have a Rick by any chance, Don't Tom? Like holy grail bass that I haven't gotten yet. Uh, me neither. And it's you know it's uh it's one of those bases that you know I mean some of our biggest influences from Chris Squire and Getty and Paul McCartney like everybody. It's just one of those bases I couldn't warm up to. I I they look cool and they sound cool, but I just something about the the space and the string spacing I I just couldn't oh, yeah. warm up to. So anyway. pretty wide, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. I've got stuff. <laughs> it goes my. Uh, I'm fired from being a weatherman. I was like, I got stuff. You know, it's over on this side. I, I got some stuff here. Um, <laughs> so I do have a V12 and a V3 set up back here on top of. Uh, that is a 112 on top of a 410, and <laughs> I'm still messing up here. And then that is a 210 on top of a 15. 
So okay, great. If, if anybody, is, I, I did too. <laughs> yeah, here's my Q12 with <laughs> the the accessory grill cloth. I got all three heads. If people want to see a V7 up close, and yep. then uh, that's a 210 and a 15 right next to it. Yeah, I don't have my I don't have the 212 here just yet. Um, still waiting on that, and I don't have any accessory grills. Um, but you're going to send me some accessory grills pretty soon. Yeah, sure. Sure. I, I, of course. <laughs> hey, one thing I want to mention, um, talking about, you know, I, I know the heads are a big splash and, and the power rating and, you know, we've been talking about the heads quite a bit. Um, I want to talk about the cabinets. So, yeah. and, and this has come up a couple of times from artists as well about, you know, can I use... Can I use a different head with these cabinets? Yeah, absolutely. Of course you can. I mean, that yeah. that's a given. Um, but don't, you know, part of what makes, obviously, like I said, the head's are fantastic, but part of what makes Venture Venture are the cabinets too. Mm -hmm. um, I've been using the, um, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. There we go. I've been using the 115 and I'm typically not a 115 guy. Mm -hmm. Um and I, I know a lot of players out there are kind of hesitant to buy a 115, a single 115, because they don't think it's full range enough. Yeah. Um, but I got to tell you, this 115, I've been using it with a V12. I used it uh, a couple nights ago with a V3. And this weekend coming up, I'm, I'm actually going to put my V4B, my, my all tube mm -hmm. head on top of it. Um, nice. Um, I, and I've, I was very hesitant with a with a 115 coming from a 212 type of format or 410 format. Um, yeah. It's killer. It's yeah. like it don't. And I'm tell, telling everybody that's watching, don't be afraid of checking out a 115 thinking it's going to be too woofy or too woolly or not full range enough. Especially uh, this series, like you're saying, we, we voiced everything to be very modern, very punchy, still having low content that SVT cabs and that ampeg's used to uh and known for but we really didn't skimp on that like top range and especially with the horn uh, do you run your horn at a certain setting or are i run the horn it? yeah i run the horn full up um okay. nice and then you know i'll i obviously i don't have i don't engage any ultra high i don't you know i'm not boosting the treble um mm -hmm. cuz the horn that's the other thing too the lavoche horns on um on these cabinets there if you're coming from a traditional classic cab that has the old um i think they were foster horns mm -hmm. that were in that that were in the classic cabinets uh in the heritage 410 hlf that's an eminence one that's an apt 50 but uh if you're coming from the old classic cabs with the horns that kind of sound really clinky like tin yeah. foily sort of thing yeah. Like tinny, um, tinny. Yeah, yeah yeah these horns um they're a lot more musical in my opinion they're not as a i'm gonna use a big word here obtrusive they're not as yeah. like noticeable per se so i could turn the corn i could turn the horn all the way up and kind of that just kind of opens up the frequency range a little bit without it sounding like oh he's got a he's got a 15 and a horn in the cabinet just sounds like a bright speaker really so yeah yeah yeah, I do keep the horn up quite a bit. And of course, if I'm running, most most of my bases are active when I'm playing live. So, um, yeah, I just keep it. You run active cool. with, uh, with the pad on, or are you a no pad guy? No pad. I'm the same way. Yeah, yeah, no it's pad. Like, given that we kind of need to accommodate that, but most active players that I know, they still don't use the pad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, because the, the pads on the venture heads are minus 15 dB, right? Mm -hmm. um, unless you've got like a really hot specter, like a 19 volt system um, or 18, 19 volt system, 18, like, 19, oh, nice. whatever. Yeah. 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 You've, you've got two nine volt batteries with a little watch battery. Um, <laughs> yeah. Unless you get a really hot base. I, I've never really felt the need to. Um, to, to use the pad because it's just whatever you do on the front end by padding your input, you're going to have to make up for it in the EQ section in the game anyways. Mm -hmm. So really the pad is just there and unless you've got like a, a crazy hot base that even with the gain all the way down, you're still clipping. Yeah. Um, yeah. The uh, so, Haji had a 
had a, he just his booster overdrive and it actually sparked me to ask people and ask you like if you're using the over the sgt system do you use that more as a boost or an overdrive on the head i use it uh in fact i just got into this discussion with with one of our artists yesterday um i use it more as a boost mm -hmm. and i don't even use it as a boost so uh, take this for what it's worth um yeah. i will set up my sound through the main part of the amp through the preamp yep then i'll engage I've, I've been using the b15 more so than the svt actually me too um, actually yeah. i'll turn on the b15 i'll turn the grit all the way down and then i will bring the level of the sgt circuit up so that it's equal to what the volume is with the circuit off mm -hmm. and then i'll just give it a little bit of a hair more so that okay. when the circuit is on you, it's not it's not distorting it's not boosting anything but it's just adding a little bit of that tube harmonic distortion even though there's yeah. not a tube in the amp i don't want anybody yeah. to think that oh there's tubes um it just kind of adds that that little bit of harmonic sound that you get from a uh from a b15 it just kind of That's fattens it up a little bit exactly what i do it's crazy like it's yeah it's, same, yeah same exact because i i love the clarity and the the cleanliness of like having the SGT off, but I rarely, I find when, like once a band kicks in, you want that fatness a little yep. bit, at least for what I'm playing. It, it just kind of makes sense. Yeah. And, and for anybody that's playing around with this stuff, try it, you know, you'll obviously you, you'll, you, you're going to want to set up your sound with the amp with no band behind you. And, yeah. and the goal is it's just kind of like a compressor too. You don't want to hear the compressor compressing your signal. You mm -hmm. want it doing its job, but you don't want to know that it's doing its job, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's the same thing with the SGT circuit. I find that you know you'll set your sound, you turn. I'll flip it back and forth. And I was like, man, there's not that much of a difference. But then when you're playing with a band and you start engaging it and disengaging, or if you're doing it with the foot switch, that's what's mm -hmm. like. Oh, all right, now I'm now I'm noticing it with it on and with it off because that that harmonic distortion is kind of cutting through the, yeah. the mix per se um, yeah ron flips in, uh he does the same thing with the rb210 which i also do with the rb210 like yeah. same exact practice mostly like level it ends up being level like 75 percent grit like maybe five to ten percent for yeah. me uh yeah. and chow barito my fellow paisan <laughs> we don't where are all the Greeks today? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, so uh, welcome, everybody that's just joining us. Uh, obviously, you know, if you're just coming into the conversation, we're Dom and I are just hanging out, answering questions about venture, uh, hopefully giving you guys some good information on on how to use your venture amps and, yeah. and, and answer any questions. I've got I did it again. It's I've, I've got, <laughs> I've got all. I, yeah. I've got all the venture stuff here back here. If anybody wants to hear anything or wants a close up, I've, um, like I said, we've we've got the uh, I've got the three camera thing going here, so we can do the roving reporter. I can get close up. Actually, you know what? I was gonna say, go ro rover around the cabs. Okay. I don't know that many people have seen like you know the rear I/O, just some oh, yeah. detail maybe on the Tolex. So one thing I do want to point out: we were talking about SGT and whatnot. So mm -hmm. this is the foot switch. So I'm switching the uh, um, the foot switch mute and unmute, but also mm -hmm. the other side of the foot switch. You can turn your SGT circuit on and off. Yep. Now, one thing, Dom, I don't know if you knew this or not, but if you have the mute switch muted yes. on the front of the amp, yep. Yes. The foot switch itself is does not work anymore. Yeah, that's intentional because of the opposite. So let's say you have it unmuted uh, and controlled via foot switch or your foot switch is plugged in. But let's say some kind of crazy noise is happening. Something is happening that you don't want to happen quickly. You yeah. And you click and mute, but you're not by your foot switch. We want to make sure you would still be able to hit the panel switch and have it actually do something. Okay. All right. That so makes sense. The mindset behind that. More of a safety feature than anything. Shout out to Sam Huang. 
who is online now. And now I'm nervous. I don't want to say anything wrong. Sam will fact check me on everything. Uh, so this is the back panel yeah. of of the 210. This so those are two Neutrix Speak On combos with quarter inch, uh, quarter yeah. inch and Neutrix work. So NL2s, NL4s, and quarter inch. Yeah. yeah, the only, just so you guys know, and I know I've got my switcher in the way here, but the, the only amp you need the, um, let me move this over here real carefully, is the on the V7 and the V12. Uh, you need the NL2. Yep. Right? So. Yep. All right. Got a lot of gear got, in there. I got a lot of gear here. And yeah, obviously, right. now <laughs> with my headphones, I'm all tied in. And you guys got a good shot of my dirty floor. I need to do some vacuuming here. <laughs> so, right. Wolfgang. Uh, this is, could be a controversial topic here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna raise some. Uh oh, uh, it's not that controversial. But <laughs> Wolfgang says a, tu a tuner is a must-have. I'm assuming that's on the head, and I respectfully disagree, only because with all the tuning apps out there on your phones and pedal boards and all that, we didn't want to blow up the footprint of the amp anymore by adding a tuner section. It's kind of the same thing with SGTDI. I know a lot of people. They're like, this thing does everything. The only thing that I wish it had was a tuner on it. I really get that because that's on the ground. But again, we didn't want to uh, add more to it and have it grow. Because every time you add something external, there's more than likely you're adding components underneath uh, yeah. that would perhaps blow up the footprint of the product. And trying to keep things, especially in the new era of Ampeg, starting with you know Venture and Rocket Base, everything's tr getting a little smaller, getting a little lighter. That's just the trend of the industry as well. Uh, still trying to deliver the same sound with smaller, uh, kind of more intuitive products. Uh, another thing that we tried to do on uh, SGTDI as well as Venture was take that, uh, essentially in Portaflex and some other uh, Ampeg SVTs, you have the frequency select switch as a separate switch to the frequency, the mid frequency booster cut knob. We're trying to combine those. A lot of people actually didn't even know that those were like tied together and that you select the frequency and then you're selecting what you're boosting and right. cutting on the other thing. So we tried to, with the dual concentrics, basically put all those together. Same thing with the SGT, kind of make them more a little, a little more intuitive. And that makes us be able to kind of uh, shrink down the product a little bit more. Because Ampex yeah. pretty much known for our nice layout, like like flat layout, where it's not like stack knobs and everything. Uh, it's kind of our signature thing. So that's yeah. kind of the set behind marrying those things together. Provi providing that's that's what he's referring to if he it, about having a tuner on the amp it's yeah if not i'm, I'm just gonna end it sorry <laughs> yeah <laughs> wolf wolfgang you can just clarify if that's what you meant or not and we'll try and answer as best as possible but <laughs> yeah i mean i i'm i've always i know we did like we did combo amps for a while the the mm -hmm. older bas bav1s had tuners on them and they were okay but yeah. you know, most most everybody either has a clip-on tuner at this point or or something. Also, like that. you kind of run the risk of whatever that tuner looks like, um, that that getting pretty dated pretty quickly. Yeah. Yep. It yep. Just kind of so, cool, so, so I want to answer Ron's question here: Is the Venture V1 uh, is the Venture 115 equal to the PF 115 LF? No, not at all. Um, completely different animal, Ron. So. Uh, if you look at our no, and this information on any of our cabs, it, our nomenclature, if it has an H in it, means it's got a horn or a high frequency driver. So right there, the PF one fifteen LF does not have a horn in it. It's strictly just a one fifteen ported cabinet. Um, on that's, top of that, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Well, I was yeah. just because uh, I kind of screwed up the uh, nomenclature for what. Ampeg has done for years with the LF and the HF and everything with the Venture series because I wanted to keep everything just as complicated <laughs> as possible. So it is a bit confusing where you see, you know, Venture VV115. Uh, there's no designation for that HF, but it does have the the horn in it, yeah. the high frequency driver. Uh, on top of that, uh, obviously price points are very different between the two because we, with Venture series, since it's Neo, um, we are basically looking to replace the Pro Neo series. And really upgrade that series because it hasn't been hadn't been uh redesigned or had an uplift or anything like that uh in years and years and it's it's pretty much that same customer that modern player 
that wants a pro features on their on their cab and everything but they also want the the portability so sonically it's it's very different the uh the vb115 is definitely more modern it's a little more hi-fi uh and it probably handle a little bit more than the pf115 yeah yeah if if anything i would say the v uh the vb115 is closer to the pro neo 115 although it's i want to say 20 pounds lighter mm -hmm. than than the existing uh pro neo but yeah um two two completely different animals there run but uh it, you know if you're uh, to your previous comment how you're using an rb210 that pf115 lf is a perfect complement to your rock and yeah. base 210 as well so you know don't think it's it's not the right cabinet with that type of rig with your rocket base 210 on top and then you're powering the the portaflex 115 lf that's uh, that's the cabinet that i actually recommend to anybody that's yeah. that has a rocket base 210 is looking for an extension cab i'll usually say the either the 115 lf or in some cases the um the uh the 115 flip top yeah, you know, the, the PF 115 HE. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, we got a lot of good stuff here. Um, yeah, yeah, we get stuff coming in here, Dom. I'm saying I also prefer clip on tuners nowadays. They're so good and they're so just convenient. Uh, Antonio said, Any chance of Ampeg pedal board power amp to match with the SGTDI? You know, we've, we've gotten a few requests for that. I think that's a great question. Um, I, I actually kind of want to answer your question with a question to the group of. Would you prefer power from Ampeg or from another company that is a little, maybe a little bit known for power amps uh, than Ampeg? I'm just curious. Where are you going with this one? I'm just, I'm just asking. That's all. <laughs> and uh, yeah. hopefully, I'm pronouncing this correctly. Fain Kevy. Hopefully, maybe. Uh, I'm sure the tiny stock feet are great for keeping dimensions down. But I had to swap out for bigger feet to float it on top of other cabs. So yeah, that's because of the handle, right? Yeah, look, so look at look at his previous comment about loving his V3 so far, but as far as construction, he's a little bummed about how the enclosure gets scratched. Are you talking about mm -hmm. the enclosure on the amp? I'm assuming you're talking about the enclosure the, the actual meadow enclosure, and you're putting it on top of a 210 AV. So, oh, so yeah. So the bottom of it's the, it's scratching yeah. the bottom of uh yeah scratching the bottom yeah. of the amp yeah i'll uh we'll have to look into that it, that's part of like a powder coat look which is what we have on there is uh it's it's a nice modern look but that is some tradeaways sometimes is that the it scratches a little more easy because it's matte um and in those that texture kind of hangs with the paint um yeah. but we will look into that because uh we've done a lot of scratch tests that it you know did really well against that but uh, i'm also curious if you don't mind sharing the feet that you used um for that because maybe we can recommend that to customers as well that are looking to yeah put that on top of a 210 av or something with that that has a strap handle on top because i think that's the only cabinet that has a strap hand uh well the the the, the pf flip cabs but you can just flip mm. the lid so the handle handles in but yeah i think the 210 av is the only cabinet that has the handle on top which you know, they, I'm sh there's probably players out there like like Fane is doing. You know, mm -hmm. with a V3 or or a V7 or a V12 on top yeah. of a couple. So, yeah, yeah thanks for that. I'm glad. Otherwise, you're loving the V3, and yeah. uh, we will. Uh, yeah, we'll take your bigger feet recommendations. So please bigger feet. Up. I've got big feet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Outsider Dave, you guys need to need a venture giveaway. Well, you never know. Um, maybe in, in a future episode here, we'll, uh, we'll be doing actually just kind of getting away from this, from the topic here next year is, um, Ampeg's 75th anniversary. And we're going to be mm -hmm. celebrating that throughout the entire year, starting in January, NAM January, all the way through to the end of the year. And we're talking about doing giveaways throughout the year for stuff like that. So yeah. that, I'm feeling that, a lot of you would probably a lot of you that have the venture series would probably want one, one of these bags. Ah. Nice, nice giveaway. Possibly. Yeah, I, actually, I used my bag on a fly date mm -hmm. this weekend. I didn't I didn't take my amp with me. I just took pedals. But I <laughs> use, <laughs> but I, yeah, I used I used that bag. Um mm -hmm. 
as a pedal board bag. I, although I didn't have a pedal board, I just took the pedals that I was going to use on the gig this past weekend and mm -hmm. just kind of threw them in that bag. And it just kind of made a nice little tote to, uh, to carry gotcha. my pedals and my cables around with. So George Biondo, George, how are you, my friend? So for those of you that don't know George, George is... I know I'm I'm going to get this wrong, George. So, I, but I apologize. But you, I know you're not the original bass player from Steppenwolf, but you were right there, right around the beginning of of the band. And George is one of our uh, our eldest and most um, most dearest and pick and When I say eldest, I mean by he's he's been endorsing the brand longer than any other artists that's on our roster right now in oh, fact i want to say probably longer than dom and i have been around um <laughs> so we're talking like since the mid 60s and uh okay. good to see you on here george man let's we'll we'll keep in touch on the off off conversation at some point but uh yeah i want to reach out to you real quick here Fame, um thank you yeah uh, yeah so there's the specs on the wide feet Three quarter inch by 1.5. I'm going to take that and I'm going to add that to our FAQ. Yeah. So as far as can, can like, what if I want to, you know, mount my head on top of a 210 AV or a PF cab or whatever. So thank you. That, that's sorry. You had to yeah. find out the hard way. We can send you a new bottom panel. Actually, we can't because everything's attached. Yeah, I was going to gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Just, he's like, no, <laughs> no, we can't. You, yeah. Right. Uh, um, one thing that I haven't tried yet. And I am going to try this eventually. Um, and if anybody has tried this yet, please comment. Uh, mounting a V3 or V12 to a Portaflex flip top mm -hmm. lid. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, I'm, I'm going to guess that the feet don't even come close to lining up. So Maybe it would entail having to drill new holes. Right. But I'd be curious to see if, uh, again, it, it, you know, the whole the beauty of anything ampeg and, and people ask this all the time is can i mix this head with this cast can i take a, a pro series head and put it on top of a classic cab or a classic mm -hmm. head on top of yes absolutely you most certainly yeah. can um so getting back to my original thing here it's about you know taking um taking a venture head and putting it on top of a portaflex cabinet you know yeah. it's is it recommended I, 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 who knows? I'd be curious to see if it worked though. Um, yeah. you know, two, two totally different animals, two totally different applications, I would think. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, don't be afraid to, uh, to mix and match. And, and again, you know, I, the, I, I want to say that it still remains to be seen how players are going to adopt heads versus cabinets. You know, like, like I, I, I guess the question I'm asked is, I'm curious to know how many of you out there, when Venture was launched, did you buy a head? Did you buy a head? Did you buy a cabinet? Or did you buy a head in the cabinet? And it's I know, you know, yeah, I mean, the stuff, it's not, you know, these things aren't cheap. I'll, I'll be honest with you, but they're, you know what I mean? They're, they're, what's the, what's the V3? V3 is 4.99. Yeah. I mean. You know what I mean? So a lot of people might piece their rigs together. Like, hey, you know what? I've got a really kill a Pro Neo cab or I've got a really kill a Portaflex cab, but I do want to change the head or vice versa. I really love the head that I'm using. I just want a lighter cabinet or vice versa. Again, people are just like, you know what? I, I love everything about this Venture series. I'm going to, I'm going all in. I'm buying a, a head and a cabinet and then probably adding another cabinet somewhere down the yeah. road so that I have the modularity. That's the other thing too um, that we didn't point out here is the modularity of the cabinet. So the, you know, the 112 is the same width as the 410 <laughs> is the same width as the 210 is the same width as the 115. The only cabinet that isn't the same width is the, is the 212, which we yeah. put feet on the other side so you can actually, put it horizontally and then stack on anything on top right or right, right. For sure. but yeah it would yeah. work better the 220 212 is the bottom that that gorgeous thing i love the pf grill on that it's amazing yeah and uh pf grills are i don't know if they're in if they're available just yet they, um, i believe yes you think so okay all right yeah, yeah we'll have to uh 
we'll have to check that out. But um, yeah, at some point, uh, like I said, I've been using the 115 quite a bit. And I think my next test is going to be taking the, the, the 112 and the 210 mm -hmm. out on a gig. Um, or I might just, I might just bite the bullet and buy a second two second single 12. And that's always, that's been my go-to rig for so many years is two single 12 cabs. And then on a smaller gig, I'll take just one single 12, oh, yeah. that makes sense. you know, yeah. that sort of thing. So, uh, Dale, you're still lugging your SVTCL, man. Dale's bless you, dude. I'm going to show him. Uh oh. Go <laughs> God, rub it in. Yeah. I can't. There we go. Plug it. There you go. Yeah. There it is. You know. There it is in all its glory. That's the V7. Yeah. Yep. I got to tell you. It's mine. <laughs> yeah, it's yours. Um, Dale, to 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 help you out here, so. Um, I've been a CL guy, SVT guy up until I, I'm going to, I'm going to laugh, but up until my first back surgery, <laughs> which, which was, uh, probably about five years ago, four or five years ago. Um, yeah. now I'm a little more selective on what gigs I take my SVT on, but up until that point, dude, I brought, I brought an SVT every gig, even all my wedding gigs, I would bring an SVT and a 410 cap because yeah. that was it uh and again back then they really weren't making stuff that you know port, port at that point portaflex wasn't even out yet or it was just starting to come out anyways long story short love your cl always play your cl um this is again i i know i use this term pretty openly it is a different animal but it's not a different animal i've been right. taking the v12 yeah i was gonna say v12 or even a v7 with um moving in the opposite direction with uh the SGT circuit on SVT, you're going to, yeah, it's going to be dangerously close to a CL. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it really like that's, that's when you have to, you have to kind of weigh the options of what's my load in like, do, right. you know, am I going to have help? What's my load in like, but it's just kind of like, is it, is it worth the extra effort lifting an SVT into this gig? And sometimes it is. In yeah. some cases, it is like, yeah, I'm, I'm. There's still gigs that I, I'm bringing my SVT. It's, mm -hmm. but then you know, I, I will say where this really comes in handy, where I noticed it, was the 2 a.m. loadout. Mm -hmm. After it, after loading, loading, you're still hyped up for the gig and you're excited. Yeah, but <laughs> exactly. You know, you you load in, you do your sound check, you play a four hour show, two o'clock in the morning you know, you're, you're tired, you're sweaty, and now you got to load out. And it's just like, oh. and with this stuff, man, it's like literally in the bag, bag over the shoulder, pick up the cab with one, like my, the 115, you can grab with one hand and, and carry it out. You can load in and out in one shot. And yeah. uh, it's just, it's just so cool, man. It really is. Uh, Haji just commented, grill accessories are in the shop. Perfect. Thank you, Haji. Thanks. So Andy. yeah, go, go get them uh there's the address um so yeah yep uh what else we got we're so one thing i didn't mention is we are keeping this to like a half hour 45 minutes today um just because we don't want to bore you guys and um you know I, nobody wants to hear me talk for 45 minutes and yeah. i know dom doesn't want to hear me talk for 45 minutes but we're going to be having more of these too um so what I what I do want everybody to do, if you have a minute here, is in the comments or later on after we repost these clips, let us know what you guys want to see in mm -hmm. future SVT times. Let us know artists that 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 you really want to see, even if it's an artist that we've already had on that we haven't had on a while had on in a while. Uh, mm -hmm. Let us know who you want to see because I'm I'm always happy to to see suggestions and come up with ideas for for SVT time. If there's a product specific thing that you want to get into, um, you know this is this is this is just as much for you guys as it is as it is for us. 
So obviously, I mean, we're here for you. We'll keep on doing. I say it all the time. But we'll keep on doing these until they tell us to stop. So what is, are, until, we in the, are we? At, have we cro crossed into episode sixty yet? Are we in the sixties? We're still. This is episode fifty-nine. I forgot to mention that at the very right. beginning. Yeah, yeah. So next, uh, not next Tuesday, but the Tuesday after. I think it's the Tuesday. I got to check my schedule. Um, hang on. It is November 21st. Um, so two Tuesdays from today, we will have um, Joe Ayub mm, on nice. as a guest. So those of you that aren't familiar with Joe, um, Joe was, and I think he still does. I could be wrong on this, but Joe was the American Idol basis for a long time. He was the cat you'd see in the with, with, with the big hair and... Yeah. Uh, stand in front of an SVT and typically playing either a P base or I think he had a has a Federa too. But a mm -hmm. great guy. Um, he's now doing the. I don't know if I can say it or not, so I'm not going to say it because I don't. Yeah, but anyways, I think I can, but I'm not. Just I'm going to err on the on the side of on the side of caution here. But he's doing another big television daytime talk show, um, and he's a huge adopter of venture. Uh, as soon as as soon as he plugged in some of the venture stuff, he was like, "This is going to be perfect." Anyways, uh, we'll have Joe on uh, after Joe. We've got Alex Bashari um, from Noah Khan coming on, and then uh, and then I think we close out the year with Yannick Guzdala, depending on okay. on his availability. Yeah, I know Yannick's Yannick's over in Europe right now doing some shows. So um, yeah, happy birthday, Juan! I know you you just said your birthday's on the twenty first. Hint hint. Um, um, ready to go. SVT, me. hey, SVT so, heads tips and tricks would be cool unless that has been covered. No, not it hasn't yeah. been. So, um, namely, how to avoid back surgery. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, sir, what's that? Step one, get a roadie. Yeah, right. Um, so yeah, we'll uh, we can definitely cover some of that and um. Man, what can I say? Uh, thank you all for for chiming in again. Uh, Dom, thanks mm -hmm. for being here, man, and, and helping me out on this. Um, thank you, Haji, in the background. I know you're watching. I know you're you're listening. Haji's Haj, I, Haji's Haji knows more about. Uh, I won't even get into it, but Haji's <laughs> been Haji's been with the brand almost as long as I have. Um, coming in from from the loud years, I've been with the brand since since jazz was popular i'll just say that <laughs> <laughs> but anyways no yeah since it was the amplified peg exactly before long anyways thank you everybody uh for showing up aaron thank you for putting this all together and um we will see you guys in two weeks and bring us your questions and your comments and anything else you want to see all right guys play more bass we'll see you soon thanks everyone